So here I am, the award-winning Mike Mitchell. Uh, it's, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming along. Uh, thanks to the uh, conference organisers for, for having me. Um, not too much of an introduction, because I've, I've been asked to speak for precisely 12 minutes, which is a pretty tough ask, uh, anybody who knows me. Um, so 36 years in the seafood industry. I, I first presented to the World Seafood uh, Congress uh, in St. John's in 2013 when I posed the question, did the horse meat crisis represent a paradigm shift for food manufacturers? Uh, I followed that up in 2015, uh, trying to answer that question. Uh, and here we are in 2017, and, uh, and, and believe it or not, I've started by talking about horse meat yet again. It's a difficult habit to break. Uh, it, it was an issue of such seismic proportions uh, for the food sector. But today I'm here to talk about the landings obligation, and I'm here to give you a perspective uh, from market-facing businesses. And, and by that, I basically mean the retailers and food service operations that service fish directly to the consumer, or the suppliers who supply them, so one step away from the consumer. Uh, I'm talking principally about a UK perspective, but of course, a lot of the things I say have a resonance across the rest of Europe uh, and indeed Scandinavia. So pressing on, um, that's, this is what I aim to achieve today, a little look at the background, um, what I call a new era of, of risk management. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the uh, uh, IUU discarding uh, issue and then we'll have a think about the role of the market in bringing solutions for this problem or helping to deliver solutions uh, for what is most definitely a reputational risk uh, for, uh, for retailers and seafood brands. So firstly, uh, in answer to my question, um, uh, did the horse meat crisis of 2013 represent a paradigm shift for food manufacturers? Probably not, not a paradigm shift, uh, but it most definitely has led to a very different environment, in particular a different landscape uh, with respect to looking at risk in upstream supply chains. So uh, it's fair to say, I think, that the com confidence, consumer confidence in the, uh, in the food industry was absolutely rocked by horse meat uh, in the UK and across Europe um, in 2013. Uh, it implicated major food brands and retailers right across Europe and Scandinavia. And the consequences um, for, uh, for our industry were not maybe immediately evident because we were talking about red meat proteins. But m uh, many of the problems that we, we subsequently uh, saw with the horse meat, uh, the driving problems, um, are, are true of, of any food sector. And, and you could argue particularly true about the complex and diver diverse world of seafood supply chains. What's at risk is, is, is brand reputation and, and consumer confidence. And, and once lost, uh, it is not easily regained. And just as an example of, of that, Findus beef lasagna was taken off retailer shelves in 2013, and it has never returned. So that's, uh, that's quite an impact for that, uh, that particular part of the market. Um, what has happened is, uh, is food retailers and, and suppliers uh, to that sector have, uh, have now taken um, um, deep actions, a deep dive into looking at uh, the potential avenues for fraudulent, fraudulent activity uh, in upstream supply chains. And the risk that we know of of IUU fishing um, is now being classified by many retailers and food, man uh, food uh, manufacturers in the UK as a type of food fraud. So that's IUU. I'm not here today to talk about IUU. I'm, to I'm here to talk about IUU discarding. This is a new risk. Uh, risks, um, risks emerge uh, when things change. And I think it's fair to say that the, uh, the latest uh, iteration of, of the common fisheries policy um, created a, a very big change. Um, from a fisher's perspective, from a fisherman's perspective, um, you know, they went to bed on the 31st of December uh, with a legal obligation to discard, and they went to work on the 1st of January with a legal obligation to retain catch. Uh, that, that kind of seismic shift regulatory size, uh, seismic shift is a kind of driver that could incentivize uh, illicit uh, malpractice. And for an industry, uh, particularly in the UK, where I'm based and, and where I've worked in, in this field for, uh, for the last uh, over 10 years in CSR, um, 
uh, we've done a lot of work and we've come a long way. We've come a long, long way in the UK in legitimising our fisheries and, and, and driving greater transparency across our supply chains and building confidence, uh, market confidence and, and con uh, consumer confidence uh, that we're doing the right thing right across the value chain. Um, ten years of hard work. Now, suddenly, with this, uh, this change in policy, we find that, that, that there is this new risk emerged. Uh, and it's a bit of a shock to the system, actually, because there is evidence, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later uh, in this presentation, there is evidence that in some fleet sectors uh, in European fisheries where the obligation to retain catches has, has, has kicked in, has come into practice, uh, that vessels are continuing to discard illegally. Illegal discarding, IUU discarding. Um, this is not just a threat to brand security and brand integrity, of course, as we know, it's also a potential threat to the sustainability of European fish stocks. Because unaccounted for fishing mortality as a result of discarding, after the ban of discarding, is potentially a driver of overfishing and overexploitation. Um, during last year, uh, two independent reports emerged, they came to my attention. Uh, and bearing in mind I'm working with uh, principally UK retailers and uh, food service uh, outlets um, that, that indicated this uh, IUU discarding risk was, uh, was very real in, in some of our European fisheries. The first one was an independent report by two fishery scientists, uh, Rob blythe Skirm and Lisa Borge. Some of you may know these, these guys. Um, that was a report on assessing the implications of the landing obligation in MSC certified fisheries. So here's another dimension where illegal discarding uh, can threaten the integrity of supply chains. It's not just the brand integrity of the guys who are selling it, it's if that's a certified fishery, it's the brand integrity of the certification model. Uh, and the second one is a European report from the Shaven and Gr uh, Control Expert Group, so it's an official European document, uh, monitoring and, uh, the, uh, the monitoring of the uh, demersal landings obligation. So there's two reports. I'm gonna I've lumped them together. I'm going to summarise them both. There's a lot of detail in here. I'd recommend you look at them if you really want to dive into it, but I'm just going to give you the headline uh, news from both of those reports. The blythe skirm borge report concluded that in the event of weak landing obligation implementation, so that's national member state uh, capability to implement the, the, uh, the regulation, uh, EU demersal troll fisheries appear to be pati at particular risk of failing MSC assessment. Uh, and the Shavening uh, Control Expert Group said of the 12 North Sea troll fisheries that they assessed, four were considered to represent a high or very high risk of illegal discarding. So it's hard to ignore these reports. I mean, and, and as, a, as uh, reputable and responsible retailers and, and, and brand owners in the UK, we can't just, um, we can't just agree to ignore this, this kind of evidence. And there are other indicators of risk. I'm going to look at three very briefly uh, because I've only got 12 minutes. Um, uh, one is a report from the European Fisheries Control Agency about discarding in the Baltic Sea. Um, we have the IC's estimates of unaccounted uh, fishing mortality uh, in, in the Baltic. And we also have evidence from other parts of the supply chain where the, um, uh, where the non-commercial uh, landings are supposed to go when they're landed, after they're landed. So what did, what did EFCA say? Uh, I, I heard this in Vigo uh, earlier this year. Uh, Miguel Nuevo of EFCA uh, represented a report based on the agency's last haul um, uh, inspections uh, in the Baltic Sea. Uh, he, uh, and I quote here, there appeared to be a problem uh, on reporting discards. Uh, out of the five demersal fishing group, uh, gear groups assessed by EFCA in different areas of the Baltic Sea, two were considered to be of high risk of illegal discarding and one of medium risk, and only two were low risk. Um, Miguel Nueva also stated that in his view, um, there were greater challenges with the implementation of the landings obligation uh, in, in North Sea fisheries. And we will see that uh, play out this year. I'm going to read this bit out loud. I know you can all read and you don't need me to read it for you, but I'm going to read it because I think it's really important. I don't want to miss it. This is a direct quote from the latest ICES advice on the Eastern Baltic cod. Landings of fish below the minimum conservation reference size are very low and discarding still takes place despite the fact that the landing obligation has been in place since 2015. 
The discard rate in 2016 with the present MRCS was estimated at approximately 10% based on observer data. However, there have been problems gaining observer access in some countries, and the 10% figure is considered to be an underestimate. So this is a fishery that's had a landing obligation for two years now, and ICs are saying around about 10% or maybe more of that catch is being discarded illegally. The consequence of this is we're likely to see the consumer uh, uh, um, uh, NGO uh, fish guides, the, the fish lists, the business to business and the business to consumer guides on responsible seafood being modified to re increase the risk of fisheries uh, that are, um, uh, uh, there, where there is evidence that they're not complying with the landings obligation. Um, I'm, I'm going to briefly talk about fish meal. This is, you know, there are a number of outlets where, where a fish below the minimum reference conservation si uh, size can go, one of which is fish meal. Um, in Scotland, uh, there is a fish meal uh, processing uh, operation up there that's had a trickle uh, of, of fish coming through the fish market. In England, there is one fish meal uh, producer for the whole of England that has seen absolutely nothing coming across the harbours uh, of fish landed below MRCS, um, which it, it, you can either assume from that the, uh, the fisheries are absolutely clean and they're not having any discards, or those discards are going back into the sea. So what can we do about it? I'm not here, just, I'm not here to criminalise fishermen. That's not the point. They've got a very difficult task, but the market cannot simply sit back and accept, um, tacitly accept illegality in supply chains. So in my final 30 seconds, I'm going to have to whiz forward a little bit. Um, in, the, in the UK, we've had a couple of initiatives. We've, been, we've had a correspondence with our minister, and we have an alliance of uh, retailers and processors that have developed a common position on this for discussion with the authorities. We want the authorities to take this seriously. We want to shine a light on the issue. We don't want it swept under the carpet. We know that we need measures to increase selectivity in fishers, uh, fisheries so there is less discards. Uh, we need more uh, flexible uh, access to quota. Uh, we need innovation in fishing management methods. And we need to incentivize that. But the bottom line is this. Legal sourcing is a no compromise for the marketplace. The market requires that there is no illegal practice in their upstream supply chains. And the market will continue with their efforts to ensure that all seafood is sourced from fully documented legal sources. And we recognize the need for urgent practical actions to be taken in order to prevent the loss of buyer confidence in EU seafood supplies. Because they have no doubt about it, if you don't have legal uh, assurance of legal practice at sea, the market will stop buying this fish. Thank you. One thing is for sure, I have not decided that you only had 12 minutes available. <laughs> because I'm one of these guys who can talk forever. Um, but one question, brief factual question. If not, I have one. I've prepared one even. And that is, do you think that the business in the fish sector has a crisis management plan ready if suddenly there is a uh, articles in the newspaper saying that fishermen are throwing good fish overboard again? In a word, no. Um, I think, as, as with any industry, I think it's a mistake to think of, of, of our industry as an industry. It, it's an, an aggregation of many different industries. And, um, and within each of those sectors, there are good practitioners uh, and of those who care less. In, in best case examples, some parts of the fishery have got real thought leadership. And at a fishery level, at a fisherman level, at a vessel level, the guys are, are working hard to, to improve the selectivity of the catch. They're modifying their gear. They're thinking about spatial uh, and temporal management measures on a voluntary basis to try and solve their problem. Mm. But that's a small group of thought leaders. If you take the industry as a whole, no. There is no contingency fallback emergency position for the industry to take. Thank you very much. And that was the cue word for the next speaker. Thank, Thank you very you. much.